Um, welcome to Teachers Teaching Teachers. It is uh, September 4th, um, 2013, and we have a nice, relaxed, informal conversation with some artists, and maybe some others that will be joining us, too. We're all artists, right? So, anyway, some art teachers, I should say. <laughs> but anyway, it's certainly interesting um, in our little pre-show here. We started talking to each other. It's interesting how many different places we come from. But let me introduce, my name is Paul Allison, and um, I am helping, um, working with a new group of folks at starting a new school called New Direction Secondary School and in the Bronx. And uh, one of the art teachers there, the art teacher there, the art department, <laughs> Jake, Jacob. Jacobs, right? Yes. Jake Jacobs, yes. Yes. Um, said that he was interested in connecting students, and I told him about TTT, and uh, he said, "Why don't we get some art teachers together?" And so that's what we're doing. We're just I, we don't have an agenda. We're just talking about art, and Ali will um, jump it off and ask you to do introductions just by saying our our principal, um, who's in, is James Wislowski said to me, in reference to Jake, that art is really important. He said that art is the DNA of our new school. So I hope that's going to be true, and I think we should think about what that means a little bit, perhaps. But um, I think it's a good thing. Um, uh, Jake, do you want to go ahead and introduce yourself a little bit? Well, uh, sure. Um, so yeah, I, um, I was teaching, uh, this is going to be my seventh year. And so that, you know, I'm a career changer. I've been a working artist my whole life. Um, it, uh, during the internet bubble, it got a little exciting. Um, I was doing uh, animation, and I was meeting a lot of celebrities. And um, before that, I had done uh, independent comics. Um, but, you know, I've always uh, kind of held down art jobs in design, publishing, um, you name it, you know, going back to since I was a kid. And... Um, when I uh, married a teacher and had kids, um, uh, she's always pushed me into um, going into a classroom with all my art because I had I had a, a, a strong technology um, piece. You know, I've been a Mac user ever since '86, and I've always used you know art with computers and um, you know uh, flash animation got to be kind of like a cutting edge technology. Um, so I, uh, I finally became a teacher in 07, and I've been teaching in the Bronx where, um, you know, art is kind of like the, um, oasis to a lot of kids where, you know, they're over-tested and school is, frankly, boring, you know, to them. Um, and, uh, you know, they always tell me that art is their favorite subject at the beginning of the year, um... And some even say it at the end of the year. So uh, um, I'm I'm joining this new school now, where um, they're really focusing on at-risk students, and uh, the principal's uh, vision and his mission is to prevent kids from dropping out and uh, getting disconnected, and to try to get them reconnected. And so um, the talent block is going to be really important, and that means either art or gym. Um, and I think they're going to also split off into dance as well. And, um, you know, giving kids, you know, that are really um, just hanging on um, more of what they really want to do, what they really, you know, where their interests lie, and um, trying to facilitate that, you know, in a way that meets all the state and city requirements and, you know, really... Um, you know, documents progress and kind of converts their interests into um, these things they're going to call learning competencies now where we are able to, you know, give kids um, grades and report cards and everything, but it's really student-centered. And I don't mean, you know, just like um, con adapting lessons to graffiti art or comic books. I mean, like, you know, really allowing them to pursue the direction that they want to go from sixth grade or seventh grade all the way up through high school you know and um, so uh, 
So Jake, yeah. thanks for that. That was quite a complete introduction. Yeah, <laughs> but that's, that's fine. Um, but um, so that's great. Um, Colleen, thank you for joining us. Um, I'm not sure how you came upon us, but we're glad to have you here. Introduce yourself, if you would. Thanks. We can tell where uh, you're from in the background there. Did you yeah. think that, or is that yours? Yeah, I did. Oh, so yeah, tell um, us where that is. <laughs> that is Terrace Bay, Ontario, Canada, which is about an hour away from me. I live in Red Rock, Ontario, and that's at the northern tip of Lake Superior, so uh, quite a distance from a few of you, but it's a beautiful place, so uh, lots of nature, not a lot of cities, but, uh, but it's beautiful. So yeah, I teach here at uh, Nipigon Red Rock District High School, and it's uh, grades 9 through 12, and all our classes, which is great. This semester I have grades 9 and 10, and, uh, and I'm for the first time teaching an e-learning course, and it's media arts, mm -hmm. so that's, that's something new for me. And the next semester I get all grades through 9 and 12 again, so that's uh, it's pretty cool. Lots of fun. Tell us more about the e-learning course. How does that work? Who's that for? I, you know what, I am just learning it myself. Mm -hmm. I'm so fortunate. I have a husband who has a little bit of experience with e-learning, mm -hmm. and uh, and I'm learning tons from him already. But uh, I'm taking baby steps, and I'm sure I'm sure that the kids don't mind moving slowly with me at first until we get a little bit more comfortable with it. But it's the kids what, at I, your high school or or in your district? I, so so far, it's just a few at the high school, and we're not sure if it's being opened up to the board or not. Mm -hmm. And that's a decision they're making in the next few days. But I said it doesn't matter. We'll just go with the flow and see what happens as long as we get to create some pretty cool stuff and experiment a little bit. Cool. It, it'll be all worthwhile. Thanks. Chris Sloan. Hello. Uh, my name is Chris Sloan, and I teach high school English and media and photography at Judge Memorial in Salt Lake City, Utah. And um, so some of what um, Colleen was just talking about resonates with me because I teach photography and then a class called New Media. Um, and so a lot of it is inquiry driven, you know, students photograph or try to tell stories through whatever medium makes the most sense. And, uh, um, you know, the last few years uh, has been a lot about sharing with others and trying to connect with other students around the world. Um, just to learn from them, but also to share their creations with people. Um, so, you know, I'm looking forward to talking to both of you, um, well, to everybody tonight, just about connecting, too, because I taught before. When I first took over the program, I think it was about seven years ago, it was actually a darkroom class, photography, which was, you know, like products were kept in the building, maybe we'd hang it on the walls and that kind of thing, and so there's a big shift in now how we go about things like sharing our work to other students around the world so that's kinda what I'm up to. Hi Monica. Introductions please and your connections with art. <laughs> well my connection with art is spending my whole life being a math teacher and thinking I didn't have an art until I ran into Seth Godin's work and where he defines art as the thing you can't not do. So it's very fitting with, um, I've been the last five years experimenting with the intersection of city as, as school, the intersection of city and school, where you know the, the whole city is the school in order to facilitate art and curiosity in every person. So um, I love what you guys have said so far. I was just thinking as you were talking about DeviantArt and um, My Block New York City. Um, I met them through you, Paul, um, when Brian Passione was on. And their latest iteration is this camera. I'm thinking of what you said, Chris, of sharing stories. Um, and they're in beta form right now, so it might be something you guys want to look into. Um, the, um, What's it, what's it, what's their name again? I mean, they changed their name recently. It's camera. Right? It's C A M R A. I just put it in our chat. Um, 
What it is is it's an app so that you can take and e videos and edit them. You can talk over them. Um, they originally were my block New York City where if you went to their site it was like a big Google map and they had really thin yellow lines and if you hovered over them it was a video of the expert on the block you know so I don't know yet but this is brand new beta that they've switched to so I'm assuming it's to facilitate what you guys are talking about how how to share stories and share art and share all that but there's so many cool things out there today um, so anyway looking forward to what you guys have. Monica, can you say a little more? You, you last year you worked with an art museum, did you not? With a project with portraits or something? Or well, the the main thing we did last year, if you guys are familiar with um, Jr., the famous street artist that won the TED Prize, we mm -hmm. we did that project. Um, but you know, just connected with like the. Um, I'm, I'm not so familiar. Can you say that again? Oh, um, sorry. Yeah. Um, JR is a famous street artist that um, he won the TED Prize a couple years ago. And what he did with that is he wanted people to share their stories. Um, he didn't want it to be any kind of, um, you know, marketing or anything. It was just individual stories. And so what he would, what they would do is you would send in a black and white mugshot photo of a face and they would blow it up so that you could then wheat paste them on city buildings or um, and so it just went globally all over the world I mean if you go on Facebook and or wherever um, they've just got pictures from how different communities have taken that project and gotten to know their community better because of those pictures you know hmm. I could talk forever about it so if, if it if, if people have more questions, I'll go on, but that's enough for now. And well, I, and I, I would add that what's interesting about his work, too, is he goes into these places where it's about disruption, too, of class. You know, like he went to Israel and Palestine and took pictures of people on the Israel side and then people on the Palestine side, and then he pasted, like, the pictures of the Palestinians on the Israeli side of the wall. And, you know, he's famous for his work in the slums of Rio, um, you know, just making people more aware of working women, I think that was the one there. And, yeah, he's an amazing guy. Yeah, a quote I hear in my head, like, every day is the year after his prize, when he was recapping the year. And it's a six-minute video from Ted. And um, about five minutes in, he says, don't tell me there's not enough people in the world who want peace, you know, just from what he'd seen in that short year. That's kind of nice to hear with International uh, Day of Peace coming up, I think. It's September 21st. Mm -hmm. That's right. And, yeah. uh, and that's pretty cool. But that Inside Out project by JR was really cool. And what's neat is that um, I don't know if you guys have heard of Olivia Goode from Chicago with the Spiral Art Workshop, but she talks a lot about the postmodern principles and how they can... Uh, create a little bit more meaning for students. Like you're all familiar, I'm sure, with the elements and principles of design, but she extends that and uh, and talks about postmodern principles. I'll have to look for a link for you later. But uh, juxtaposition, which is something that Jr. does in his Inside Out project, is one of those principles, and it's a fabulous way of creating a lot more meaning for students and for them to be able to. Um, appreciate art on different levels. So that's pretty exciting stuff too. Yeah, I've been noticing um, that this real um, surge in uh, interest with street art and I love the idea of um, wheat pasting. I'd, I'd like to learn more because um, you know we're, we're going to be muraling in our school and um, I'm afraid to put kids up on ladders so I was thinking maybe uh, the lower half of the wall, which is all this kind of tile, maybe we could um, actually try wheat pasting. <laughs> and um, I've never heard of that. Well, it's um, I don't know if anyone saw the um, documentary about uh, Banksy called uh, Exit Through the Gift Shop. But, yeah, um, that was good. Yeah, it's all about um, Shepherd Ferry and uh, Banksy and a couple of street artists. So it... Um, it kind of goes through, you know, the street art movement and really how you can use copy machines now 
to like tile together these huge um, you know drawings you could just blow them up and then you just have to like you know cut and connect them all together and then the wheat paste process is I think you just like cover it with um, like this solution of um, light paste and water and it just kind of sticks to the wall so um, you know you can get these really high contrast images um, you know on these really like tall spots and um, you know walls um, and uh, you know it, I guess it could start on your computer and just you know uh, hit the print button but you're blowing these things up you know on a really really large scale so um, I love I love that idea and uh, you know following what um, what the big guys are doing um, you know Obey is like the biggest selling t-shirt now in the Bronx you know the whole fashion line from Shepard Ferry and I guess he's got to be a multi multi millionaire now you know where everything says Obey so uh, you know the kids are familiar with with uh, with his work already. She hasn't made its way up to Red Rock yet. Oh really? <laughs> Shepard uh, Shepard Ferry was the guy that did um, uh, Andre the Giant's face, and uh, I guess he put it up. I, I think he's from uh, the West Coast, so he put it up all over Los Angeles, and he traveled around. Yeah. And um, it became like this iconic image. You know, he. Um, he also did the thing, the, the thing where you cut the paper out and you turn it into a stencil, and then you apply paint on all the negative spots and then pull the stencil down, which is oh, yeah. which which is what Banksy I think does. Do you guys all know Banksy? Yeah. The mm -hmm. the, uh, the the British um, anonymous artist that uh, has has caused so much controversy. So, you know, Shepard Ferry. Isn't I guess, it really you? Come on. <laughs> I'm not Banksy, <laughs> um, but um, you know, uh, I really admire Banksy. You know, I think he's he's pushing a lot of um, envelopes, and you know, yeah, he's I would, got courage. He's got courage, but he's also redefining you know uh, art. I think you know for 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 nowadays, like in a way that maybe like Andy Warhol did a long time ago. You know, where you're sticking something up on the wall and you're making people comment on it, and you know, it's just a whole new way of looking at at design. You know, Warhol did it with a lot of different um, types of art, but you know, his soup cans and his Brillo boxes, and um, you know, kind of like forcing that upon the art world. So Banksy's doing that, um, you know, out on the streets and uh, making people see these. Images, you know, some, you know, he's really poking, you know, at authority in a big way. Um, but you know, a lot of like, um, you know, commentary for peace and a lot of, you know, social criticism. So, um, you know, it brings up the question of, uh, is it really illegal if the people appreciate it, you know, more than the, you know, more than the government or more than the, you know, police? I mean, if they applaud it and they have tours going around that that um, publish maps showing where you can go around and see Banksy's artwork all over London. <laughs> you know, is that such a bad thing? It's bringing you know tourist dollars at this point. Yeah. So um, you know, it makes people ask ask those questions and have those conversations. Monica, did you want to interrupt earlier? Or I just wanted to. You weren't. No. Okay. No, I See, this is the funny thing about school. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm thinking mm -hmm. my whole life that this is who I am, and I, I, I never thought it was into art, and I geek out about all this, you know. So yeah, I was probably trying to interrupt several times, but I'm I'm glad I didn't. <laughs> it's okay. So, uh, going back to juxtaposition, because Colleen, that's one thing you said Jr. does, right? Do I have the name right? Is it Jr.? Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah. And do you mean by that what what Chris was saying? Chris was saying about um, the images juxtapose against where they are, or or against, what? against each other. So if against each other too. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if they're displayed side by side, then you start to compare and contrast naturally, right? Mm -hmm. So you start to to figure out the meaning of well, why are they placed side by side? And these images of faces you start to wonder, well, who who is this person? And who is the next person? And why is there meaning? Why are they there? And you, you 
you naturally just get a little bit more curious and you, you search for that meaning and try and figure it out because you don't want to just have these these faces in front of you and not know why. You have to figure it out, right? So it ends up more dialogue and then therefore a lot more meaning. Mm -hmm. It it's also the uh, it's also the scale of his work. I mean, they're like enormous, you know. Like the the yeah. face the face is is blown up so big that you might only see a little part of it on the entire side of a building. But there's also this um, really you know detailed you know light and shadow. So you know it, it looks phenomenal. I'm looking at some of his stuff on uh, on Google Images now, and um, you know it's uh you know, it's when you turn a corner and you see like one of these giant faces and these expressions, you know, it it probably hits people like a ton of bricks. Well, and I think somewhere in JR's project or the people talking about it, they weren't sure who was who, and along these divided lines in very political areas, in very very tense areas, the fact that they didn't know one person from another and who, where they came from or where they belonged uh, really really said a lot about who they, who uh, people were fighting against, right? So huge meaning, huge depth of meaning. I think another element if you get into the weed pasting um, that I love, the disruptive part is and that a lot of community people didn't feel that comfortable with, so it's a sensitivity thing, but as weather takes that parts of the artwork away, you know, to me, I love that. Um, it, it shows our humanity and our imperfections. Um, but some people, you know, aren't really comfortable with that, and so they actually even have videos um, on JR's site and stuff about talking about that, you know, what that means that we let it just weather, you know. Hmm. Yeah, the um, it it it's like a comment on um, how uh, everything is temporary, and you know, art can sometimes be so temporary. I think uh, Andy Warhol once um, he sold like a drawing on a little um, pastry or something, and it sold for you know six thousand dollars and. It's only a matter of time before it just, you know, turns to mold, I guess. But, you know, the the whole thing was that, yo, you know, I'm Andy Warhol, so people just buy everything, you know, and uh, and you know, so uh, you know, the fact that art is just temporal like that. Um, I'm kind of interested in what people are doing. Like, I don't know if school has started yet, or um, the kinds of things that you're doing with your students because um, what we're talking about is a lot of what I talk about in my class and then and then we use those people as what I call tributes so like they'll study a particular artist and then they'll try to do some tributes mm -hmm. to them and I'm just gonna pop a couple of things into the chat room here yeah so there's Which a couple is at edtechtalk.com slash TTT. I will, oh, I just put it in the Google Hangout, too, I think, okay. but I'll put we'll, it there, we'll, too. We'll find it there, too. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, um, you know, like those are a couple of kids who studied some contemporary photographers was the assignment. So it was just uh, look for someone to, um, you know, uh, study their craft, and they contacted the photographers, too, so the photographers got back to them with, you know, tips and that kind of thing. And then those are a couple examples. I mean, I think they're good examples of students who, um, I mean, one basic assignment I do is like study the craft of a, of a master and then um, if they're alive, try to actually talk to the master uh, and then try to do some of that stuff yourself. So I was wondering kind of what people are up to in their classes too. So I just toss that out. Okay, let's go down the line. Okay. Go ahead. Sure. Is that a fair question? Colleen? It is. I mean, that, yeah. I mean, that's, I, I, yeah. That's I, a great question. Yeah, I think ahead. that's a, there's from for me. I find that art has changed so much. There's so many shifts in 
Oh, I see Chelsea now. Hi. Hi, Chelsea. <laughs> Chelsea, uh, um, can you talk? Yet? Hello? Sorry. <laughs> Chelsea, are you trying to talk yet? She Probably needs... need to unmute. Yeah. So work on the sound there, but go ahead, Colleen. <laughs> sure. That's OK. Yeah, Colleen, um, have you started uh, school yet? We just started classes today. OK. Yeah. Uh, but so yeah, you were saying art has changed. <laughs> it has. Art instruction has changed. Thank you for <laughs> redirecting me. Uh, there's a bigger movement towards student or uh, student choice in the art room, and um, and letting them leave the way a little bit, giving them more choices while for focusing more on the core concepts of what you're actually teaching. So with keeping the curriculum in mind. And really paying a little bit more attention to your actual expectations um, and sharing that with the students and being a little bit more transparent with your teaching, then you you open up a little bit more freedom to the class and for each student to be able to reflect their interests in how they express themselves and the materials they choose to work with. So that's my focus. There's a little bit of inquiry there, but definitely I uh, get a lot of a little bit more information from uh, people like Catherine Douglas, who co-wrote the book Teaching for Artistic Behavior, I think, or Choice Classroom. I feel horrible. I can't remember the, the title off the top of my head, but, What's her but name uh, again, if though? you take a look at Catherine Douglas. So okay. on Twitter, she's Two Ducks, and she often uh, talks a lot about student choice and and uh, a little bit of inquiry as well. So uh, I think that's a lot of my focus this year. That's what we're going to take a look at. A lot of fun stuff too and a lot of teacher-led instruction as well. But uh, but a little bit more student choice I believe as long as we're focused on curriculum. So how has that looked in your classroom? I mean how has, like if if you're offering more choice now, is that what you're saying? Mm -hmm. How has that changed over the last couple of years? You know what? I just started moving towards that a little bit more last year, uh -huh. being more aware of that and making that conscious choice and, and really letting the students be a part of that, which is huge. And this summer I read an article, and I don't know if you had read it as well, but it's... Um, entitled Smoke and Mirrors, and I think it's by, shoot, I can't remember the, uh, well, tell I us can't about remember it. We'll the author, it. but Nan, Nan Hathaway, I believe, mm -hmm. I think that name rings a bell, and it was, it's a little bit of an article that tests your teacher pride, because it challenges you to rethink what you're doing, and, uh, and not just produce a massive amount of projects that are all similar, that all the students work on in a similar way at the same time. Everyone produces lovely artwork that you can put on the bulletin board. What you have to get past that maybe to some extent and uh, to the ability to really think about what each student needs on a more personal level and, and what they're capable of. So it's it's pretty tricky. It's it's a quite a big shift, but I think that as we take baby steps, slowly we'll figure it out, and the, and the students don't mind testing the waters out slowly, too. Mm -hmm. so. that, I, I, <laughs> what you're saying is exactly what um, we've been talking about in lots of different places, because I think technology is one of the things that does that, too, and we're, we're learning certainly learning a lot of that in inquiry and English and fields oh, as well. Yeah, it's yeah, huge, so, especially right. if the students have a chance to to blog and to uh -huh. reflect on their learning. And like from last year, I started blogging, and I I couldn't believe what I was capable of as a teacher in assessing their work and creating a more personalized learning environment for each student, and the dialogue that we had in not necessarily each of the blog posts. But in the comments afterward, in the discussions mm -hmm. after that, it, it really surprised me. I wasn't ready for it. 
and so it, it allowed me to think about teaching in a whole different manner. No, it's fast. I, let, I want. I really love this dialogue. I want to keep going. I want to give Chelsea a chance to see if we can figure out your sound properties there. Though. Chelsea, oh, there you go. You're on, Chelsea. Yeah. Say hello. Oh, oh no. She dropped out. <laughs> she was there for a minute. It looks like she's working it out. That's fine. She's yeah. Maybe she has a connection issue or something. Oh, I don't know. Yeah. It, it, when you come on with this many people on, when you come on the first time, it, you are muted and you have to unmute yourself. But mm. anyway, so, anyway. so uh, who would like to keep the dialogue with Colleen going about choice and so forth? I, I, let's let's just say that. And and let me just let me <laughs> add in. I I'm totally fascinated um, as Jake and I have been talking about the way he's been teaching. Um, and and looking at well, Jake, you've called them one-offs. They're like, I mean, one of the one of the downsides of teaching art in schools many times is it's not given enough time, enough priority. And mm. is that right? And, and so you end up saying, let's try this today, and let's try that tomorrow, kind of thing. Is that? Do you want to yeah. correct that? <laughs> well, yeah. In in my um in my last couple of schools. You know, I've I taught kids that are kind of like um, been deprived of art, <laughs> like uh, mm -hmm. as as the only teacher in the school, and um, the only art teacher in the school. And um, what I've you know taken on is trying to give a kid like a whole year's worth of art in a half a year, because I would I would switch grades in the middle of the year. So um, you know what I did was I just really sacrificed like project work or you know portfolio work or whatever you want to call it bulletin board work you know or, or or doing anything you know that you really slow down and work on for a while and I just have been teaching in this way where we we you know it's really just more about exposure and so every single day it was something new and um you know, we would spend the period on it. I would, you know, go through it as if we were going to spend two or three days on it, but we would just move on. You know, the next time I saw them, it would be something completely different. And, um, you know, the good news was, you know, anytime they wanted to finish something, they could take it home. And, uh, you know, they could work on it another time, or they could, uh, you know, leave it in their portfolio, you know, just begun and, you know, come back to it later as they get other skills you know, throughout the year. And what I found is that, um, you know, you sacrifice that whole thing that your administrators like to see. They like to see, like, beautiful finished artwork up on the bulletin boards, you know, and I always thought that that was, you know, really just showing off, like, the best kid's work, you know, and really cherry-picking, and you're not really seeing the average kid, or you're not really seeing, like, you know, the, the bottom kids. So, um, you know, I... I, I noticed in doing this that the kids love this, you know, because um, they never know what we're going to do coming in, and they always want to know what's today, what's today. And so it really adds this whole, like, element of surprise thing, which ended up being a real plus in my teaching. Um, so, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to slow this down and to also incorporate a lot more choice, um, self-directed learning. And because in, in our school, it's almost the entire, you know, uh, mission, especially in art, you know, to to follow, you know, the kids where they're going to lead and, and to facilitate. So, um, you know, I was discussing this with Paul, how I'm going to translate the way I used to do these one-offs. I call them, like, hit-and-run, you know, um, lessons into our, you know, our, other, our, our model of, you know, extended units and, and stuff. And, um, I, you know, I guess I've been hitting Paul with this and the pros and cons and, you know, cons considering, you know, the, the, the whole element of surprise and showing kids a lot of different things in a little period of time, you know, and then seeing what happens because in our school we're going to have the kids later on. We're going to have them for... 7th grade, 8th grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, 11th grade, and so there will be opportunity later on, you know, See, to catch up. And, and I think this all relates back to um, the questions I was having, and, and Chris gave one example of 
how you do tributes um, with with a particular artist. But you do a lot of exposure. Uh, you call it exposure, right? Of of artists and 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 things and other ideas too. Um, and then and then kind of see where kids go with that. So so I'm just wondering how do you how do you teach kids about juxtaposition, J.R. Banksy, all that kind of disruptive stuff without kind of just copying, if, if I can say it that way. I mean, when we teach poetry uh, in English class, we, we often ask that same question, right? There's, um, there's how, do you, how do you get kids to see what possibilities there are by reading lots of different kinds of poems and, and poetry without kind of just mimicking what they see, right? Is that... Mm -hmm. and, and so I think that's all sort of related to find, isn't it? To this other question of being self-directed and, and giving lots of choice. Well, for me, um, mm -hmm. I think that the biggest thing is documenting process. And this was part of the, uh, part of the, the, the major learning curve that I went on last year. But when, when students documented the, the whole creative process that they went through, that was huge. So in looking at going back at the, to the curriculum again and seeing that the, the emphasis was not necessarily on the finished product but the process and trying to, 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 to scope out and see what kind of meaning. Oh, I'm hearing some noise Yeah, here. it's a little back. And seeing what kind of meaning this student. Chelsea, do you want to try to talk? Say Chelsea, hello. Do you want to try to talk? Say hello. Yeah, hi. Can you guys hear me okay? We can hear you, yes. Hey, Chelsea. Okay, great. We can also hear hi. ourselves and a little feedback. Um, so do you see how to how to mute yourself? Yeah, I can you, mute me. You just got on, and I'm telling you to mute yourself. That's terrible. I'm sorry. But hi, I'm Paul Ellison. <laughs> Welcome. Um, so what you want to try to do is... Is when you're talking, turn it on and uh, right unmute, and then when you're not talking, mute, and or get some earphones. But at this point, let's just try the mute in and out. So, do you want to introduce yourself, please? <laughs> yeah, I just tried okay. the mute in and out, so you're, well, you're hopefully perfect. that'll help with the inter interference. Um, I'm Chelsea Meyer, and I teach at Waverly Shell Rock in Iowa. So. Tell Middle school and, art. Okay. Say again. What do you and teach? Um, middle school art. So tell us a little bit about yourself, your teaching, and what you're doing this year. <laughs> um, I've we've connected before with Colleen and I have connected, so that's kind of exciting. Um, this year I'm trying to do digital portfolios with my students, and we're kind of going standard base, so. Um, I'm sorry, I feel like I'm kind of getting in on a lot of conversations, so I hope this is okay. It's, My internet's really spotty, too, so I am keep popping in and out, it seems like. Yeah. It's okay, it's okay, we're, we're doing fine. So, how is that exciting work, or what, what's it like, this portfo digital portfolio? Yeah, I'm excited about it. Um, it should be fun to kind of see. I, I kind of caught part of Pauline talking about the blogs and the art process and kind of documenting that. So I'm looking mm -hmm. forward to kind of having my students do a little bit of that same thing. This year we were kind of talking more about the art process. So I kind of wanted them to be more independent. Um, and hope hopefully them kind of walking through the art process or creating their digital portfolio that they could kind of be more independent. So... Is uh is the digital portfolio like um uh, a gallery like um, picture gallery or something? Good. Thanks for muting me. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's more like a website, kind of like a digital website. Mm -hmm. So where where is it? Where does it live? We were looking at some different options, like we checked um, the digital portfolio. What what options did you look at? 
We were checking into Three Ring today. Three Ring is an app, and then we weren't. It was so so, and then we were looking at Weebly for education because it allows you to have students under the age of 13. Mm -hmm. And then somebody suggested Evernote. Um, so I think we're going to try out maybe Evernote tomorrow. So you guys we, have any can, ideas? For yes. <laughs> can, I, can I proselytize a little bit? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I, youth, youthvoices.net, um, we would love to um, have your students post there. Now, um, the thing is, go ahead. So, and, and it's, a, it's, a, it's a site that, that Chris and I started with other teachers um, about 10 years ago. But um, what, what, what's exciting about it is it's all sort of like a building community already, although it's, you know, it comes and goes and ebbs and flows. But, um, but, the, um, but it would be really cool if your students could post their work there. And then it, it all gets collected into a blog, um, which isn't exactly like a digital portfolio, but, you know, it's it's not terribly different, and 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 the 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 wonderfulness of sharing in a community. So it is a social network. That what gets sacrificed is the the individual blogs. Or you you don't have a lot of control over those. They just it's just sort of collected there. But it it is a it does work that way. Um. So. You know, sign up and. We'll email you and see if that would be uh, a thing that would work. I, I did want to ask Colleen, where did your students blog, and did they get? You talked about response and d discussion afterwards, and that's what we find is so important in Youth Voices too. Is is that discussion is, you know, it's 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 real big. Um, mm -hmm. So There's where a... did your kids blog, or, and what are you planning on this year? And, can we get you to come over to these voices? And <laughs> 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 we uh, we use Blogger uh -huh. through Google because it's it's a little bit handier because uh, then you have a, your own YouTube channel you can link it and and it's really fun to play with some of the the different tools on there like embedding widgets and stuff mm -hmm. which some of the students like to do just for audience sake when they can keep track of their stats and their data and see where their mm -hmm. audience is. So that's that's one of those exciting things for some of them, right? Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, we use Blogger, we love it. Uh, but something that my board is really focusing on right now is um, assessment, which is great through those that discussion piece through the comments, and hopefully, if the student responds to your comments, well, that's so much more rich, right? Um, but another thing that I'm really trying to encourage my students to do is to not only assess themselves and to respond to my to my feedback but also to help each other by giving peer assessment mm -hmm. and peer feedback and uh, I find that if we if we give if we agree on simple rules um, like let's say okay say say two good things or two things that you find are that you appreciate about your other or the other students' work, and then give a helpful suggestion. Then they know that they have to do that, so it's it's not their fault if they they sound critical necessarily. But we talk about what the best way is to comment on each other's work, and it's so different than receiving feedback from their teacher. It's mm -hmm. it's a it seems a little bit more valid in some way, or they they respond in a different way altogether which is really exciting, right? And some of them just say what they they need to say to get by and just say that they did it. And that's fine. Some of them they might not be that all that comfortable with it, but at least at least it gets them thinking about not only how to see other people's work but also maybe how other people might see their work. Mm -hmm. And that's really important when you're starting to think about reflecting on your own work and how you can grow from there. And and I would add, um, Colleen, because my students have a similar kind of thing, um, you know, when we comment on each other's stuff and they get a lot out of that. But then um, there's this added dimension of hearing from strangers, I think. Uh, you know, like this, this sense of the other, like, you know, when my students communicate with Pauls in New York, 
uh, through photo projects, you know, or, or with, we had another teacher from New York before, and we did this thing, you know, take photos of your neighborhood. Things like that just really open up um, this whole, it's a mind-blowing thing for my kids uh, to reach out like that to communities that are very different from our own and vice versa. You know, like the kids in New York City were amazed that my kids would go up in the mountains after school and, and my kids were just amazed by, you know, so many things that you'd imagine being amazed by in New York. So there's this, you know, like what you're talking about, it's so important that they learn how to comment but then there's this thing, it's like when there's this other community that they've never tapped into before, that's pretty powerful too. It is, I agree. It's so exciting to think about other people looking at their work besides just the teacher. So not only can the teacher see their work and their classmates can see their work, but anybody could see it. So let's say you, you find a... Um, okay, well here's an example. Uh, a student posts to their blog and then they, they tweet it to me using our class hashtag and they say, okay, Miss Rose, I've just completed this post. Uh, can you give me some feedback? Well, I might comment on their blog, but I also might tweet the link out to their blog post and say, okay, um, put the hashtag comments for kids. Does anyone want to give the student some feedback? They, they might need a little bit of help here. And it's phenomenal. Sometimes you get a good response. So you're using Twitter because you're got, you have high school kids. Right. 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 Yeah, that's great. Yeah, um, it's exciting, and it's a really good way of file sharing too. Like, let's say you take pictures of them in different phases of their work, and they can't necessarily take pictures of working on their project. And if I just tweet that out, um, they can find the the file really easily. They don't need a Twitter account because they can search it using the class hashtag right. yeah. and then they can use those, those pictures in their own blog and document their work. Yeah, Twitter Twitter is really powerful that way but now you have um, uh, Instagram and uh, you know some other programs that are working the same way where once you're in the app or on the web page um, any term that you put in, any unique term you know, like the the name of your school, all in one word, or whatever. You know, they'll they they just know, you know, to look for it and find it. And um, I think it's really, really um, important that once you once you, you know once you start with art and the kids end up blogging with each other. You know, if they're on the same platform, if they're in the same, you know, space, then they could it could just go on forever, and they could be doing this, you know, on their personal time. Um, you know, throughout the entire year and maybe even beyond that, you know, if the if the conversation keeps going. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's pretty exciting stuff. Yeah. So, um, you know, that's why it's funny that Paul and I are going to be sharing a room because, <laughs> um, you know, he's, um, he's going to be using uh, youthvoices.net for a lot of his um, English or, or ELA. Uh, work, and um, you know, we, um, I should be able to have my kids or or my art um, classes uh, post their work, you know, right there in the same space. So there could be a lot of overlap, you know, between posting your work or posting your process, and then you know, turning that into all kinds of other conversations, you know, from you know, blogging to the work that you're doing in, in the, in the you know, English, the required work for English class. Yeah, well, in making those connections between the two areas will probably open up so much more understanding for those students as well, right? Yeah, yeah. But it sounds like it could be tricky with um, different grades and, um, you know, some platforms that don't allow kids over 13, I think, to uh -huh. sign up. And yeah, so, right. um, you know, you art... Younger than 13. Oh, right, I'm sorry, did I say over? <laughs> That's, That's okay. That would be pretty useless. Yeah. Um, but on you, uh, but, so on Youth Voices, we, we have young people younger than that who use right. it, so... And that, no. that's why that's why youth voices would be interesting because it's a you know moderated protected you know zone where the all the administrators are all you know classroom teachers and and they're in different states and uh, 
you know, um, something like that might be might be better for for um, for Chelsea maybe, you know, because she doesn't have to worry yeah. about kid, right. kids signing up, you know, signing up and and hitting the terms and conditions mm -hmm. for you know mm -hmm. Google or whatever the other companies you know are so, require. Yeah. So you know whether whether or not that's the solution, or and and some of, some of the you know, uh, Colleen, I would would never want to like disrupt you. You know, bloggers working great for you. You should do that. Um, one, one possibility is to to double post to the like occasionally post in both places, and then you you kind of get the word out to a larger audience. Um, so that's worth considering at least. But but. Mm -hmm. More importantly, getting back to Jake's original, one of the, your thoughts, Jake, was that we might be able to do this kind of conversation between kids as well. Um, that would be mm -hmm. kind of neat. And, and it would be, I've always, not always, when, when we did more of this around, yeah. when we did some Skyping around it, um, it was, it became... The, at first, it's just like, oh, you do this, this, this. You play these games to watch this TV show. You know, just mm -hmm. that kind of sharing. Mm -hmm. And there needs to be some time for that. But then, but then, um, if kids have read each other's blogs before they come to the conversation, um, it, well, it it be, it becomes a richer conversation more quickly. Um, so that's yeah. one thing worth considering. That's um, a great idea. Yeah. But and and I, and I I hear, <laughs> if I may say, that there is definitely a community here of teachers, and and it's not everybody, um, teachers who believe in choice, who believe in um, self-directed learning, who believe that art can be yeah. the way to make it happen, and and also collecting process is, is an important thing that we've, we we mm -hmm. also do. I mean, we do big research projects, and, and we've learned that, you know, you don't wait till the end to post about that. You, you post along the way. Um, so it feels like we should keep talking about, in the last five minutes, how we can continue doing this, right? Is that fair? Uh, Definitely. Yeah. I know my students are stoked for trying to uh, connect with others and and trying to share their work. So uh, I'm in. Yeah, that's perfect. Um, well, one one Sorry. thing one thing that I was um, uh, thinking over uh, was a way to connect um, different grades, you know, meaningfully, and. Um, I, I did get a couple of responses from like first grade teachers, <laughs> which would be you know interesting because you know those the you know really younger grades would be um, maybe interacting in a different way. Um, one suggestion that I that I ran by my principal was you know what if we were creating like little packaged shows that were going to be shown to first graders. But you know, while they were watching it, we could see the reaction in my in my room. You know, the kids that produced this little like puppet show or animation or whatever it is, um, could you know could see the kids on the other end. Even though it's more passive, um, you know, they could see where all the you know the laugh lines are, and they could really get the value of um, of uh, you know the reactions and. Um, you know, um, actually producing something for for you know consumption, more like a like like a um, you know a real career model. You know, where where you're in production of something. Mm -hmm. I th that sounds cool. I, I I also you know just like we've been informal, would want to give kids time to just hang out too. You know. <laughs> and see see how see how it happens in some way, but okay, you're all taking pictures. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so so that that was new, and and I'm I'm kind of new to this. Yeah, I mean, I just got the hang of clicking on the box at the bottom to get the person's face larger, which I didn't realize for the first half an hour. <laughs> there you go. Um, but, Paul, was there a way to to make it automatically change to the person that was speaking? Did you did you mention that? That, that happens. And it, it, yeah. It, it's happening, yeah. As long as, you're, as long as you unclick the blue, 
you toggle oh, okay. in and out, it'll go back and forth. Oh, okay, great. See, I learned something. All right, so <laughs> I want to <laughs> let's 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 make some specific plans. Uh, I think it's really kind of great. important to do that. Um, yeah, for sure. So, in some way, to to and to connect. Um, well, what, when I was when I was trying what, to. Um, what were some of the? Go ahead. Go ahead, Chelsea. Well, I was just I was asking um what what were some of the things that people were using? I know um they mentioned Colleen mentioned Blogger and then Voice Youth Voices dot net was that the other way that you guys were kind of connecting and sharing artwork? Yes. Um, I also use um, Picasso web galleries. Oh um, yes. Yeah, and um, you know I have a I before this year I had a wiki wiki spaces site that had links to it and I would give out the um, the URL for kids or for the families if they wanted to see all the student work and I have thousands and thousands of pictures that are up you know because I try to get as much as possible on there mm -hmm. but um, mm -hmm. in our school we're going to be using um, well uh, we're going to be using youthvoices.net and for pictures I'm not sure Paul is that going to be a um, well, and Chris, are you going to be using? I mean, we we use Flickr again, uh, right? Use Flickr, and then and then there is a Youth Voices Flickr group. Correct. Um, so that's one of the nice things about Flickr is that you can have your own account and then also send that to the um, to the to the Youth Voices group, and people okay. can find each other there. Um, so yeah, yeah, just while I, you're go ahead. Well, while you're thinking uh, really quick, um, so what my students do is they'll put their stuff in Flickr. So they upload their yeah. latest work in progress to Flickr, and then um, some of their stuff they'll put into the Youth Voices pool, the Youth Voices group in Flickr, and then the students on Youth Voices uh, illustrate their ideas with uh, visuals like photos and artwork. And so I talk to students about how their photos may be um, repurposed by other students. Um, you'll see, like, a lot of what's illustrated on Youth Voices is actually photos that come through the Flickr uh, group, the Youth Voices group, and I put a link to that in the chat room, too. So, I mean, that's one of the ways um, I have students share out. That's great. We do that um, with our art. With my students as well, we have a classroom Flickr account, and mm -hmm. then I have them just upload it. it. It uploads instantly from the iPad, so they actually email it to like a unique email address. And so we have a Flickr account, so I will have to connect with you guys with the Youth Voices Flickr group account as well. So I'll look yeah, that up. That, that, that right seems now. to work pretty well. I mean, it doesn't. We haven't found. I mean. Certainly in Flickr there are communities where people do mm -hmm. give a lot of feedback, but we haven't found that mm -hmm. to work no. terribly well. Um, but yeah. I, don't, I don't know why. But do you just, guys see the chat over there? Because um, Chris just put the Flickr Youth Voices group in the chat. It is yeah. Okay, great. Flickr so click slash on that. Youth Voices. Oh great. Slash group slash Youth Voices. Yeah, thank you. So. I have I have a, a, an example of a question about that I think is is gets to helping us keep connected right away and and it is this how do you start the choice stuff right because I think it's I think it's real easy for Jake to go in if I could play with Jake here <laughs> Jake to go in and do his do his one offs right but how do you hold back from that and start choice. And if you could share ideas around that with each other as art teachers, and then come back and say, "Here's what we did," and you know, and then move from there, that I think that would be interesting. Do you do you hear what I'm saying? So I'm asking right now, how do you start the the choice, the self-directed stuff, and then could we touch base back in a couple of weeks and see what happened, or even sooner? Would a, would a good place for this to be uh, be the Google Plus page or this circle that was created, or, or is there a better place? For sure. I mean, do, do you you created a and, and I'm suggesting we come back here at the TTT 
in a couple oh, okay. of weeks too. Yeah, but sure. Um, but we, yeah, we could talk about it also online. Um, I created a Google group, Google mm -hmm. Plus group called Art Teachers, and um, I think some of you guys are are in there. Um, and uh, but the the thing is, I don't think that that's really connected to email. So if I post something, and I want to talk, be. you can have uh, it sent to your email. Yeah. Oh, you can. Okay, so then you can maybe, have it notified by your email. Yeah. Okay, so maybe there is good if you guys want to um, just uh, go into a Google Plus window and type in art teachers. You'll see an icon with like a a very colorful painting of a face. Um, that's um, that's what I created to try and get this whole little circle going, and maybe we can continue it and then have other art teachers join in, you know, over time, and maybe it could build from there. Um, and I'd I'd love to talk about the, um, you know, how to introduce choice and how not to introduce choice. <laughs> so that that should be pretty interesting. What do you mean by that? How well, you know, if if you imagine. Just saying to kids, hey, guess what? From now on, you're going to be able to pick, you know, the topics and and you know, just study whatever you want to do. Um, most kids that that I teach would probably stare blankly at me, you know, until I, you know, really either gave them, you know, um, options or you know, started asking them questions, like, individually, you know, starting to get into their interests. So, um... Yeah, you know, but, you're, I, but see, I think that was a good example of how not to do it, right? Right, right, right. <laughs> That's what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, okay. Right. And, but, and, and, but, and but there are ways... Yeah. Um, one of my favorite stories to tell, another art teacher I worked with, I know, I know we're over time, sorry, but, um... Well, he, I went out to, and grabbed some coffee with him in late October, and he said to me, there's a student in my class who I haven't figured out what he's going to do yet, right? And I said, what? It's late October. Like we, I've done all this stuff in my English class. He said, no, nah, I haven't figured out what his project is yet, right? So it's about listening, and it's about you know, finding out, yeah, what, what is it that they need to do? You know, so I learned a lot from from him saying that. Do you, do you, so well, yeah. doesn't that remind you a little bit about uh, twenty percent time and genius hour and letting the students lead the way a little bit more? Yeah. And you know, not that we have to really dive on into those those big ideas, but letting them influence our work and how we interact with students is, and even in baby steps, like just trying a few things out and and testing the waters. I think that's huge. Yeah, I mean, exposing them to, you know, artists and, and then showing them, like, how to, you know, recreate different styles is important. But, you know, one of the reasons I was doing so many, you know, uh, disjointed lessons one after the other was because at the end of that year, you know, the kids will have seen dozens and dozens and dozens of different things. And from there, maybe they'll see, you know, something that they that they like better than other things. Um I mean, you know, it's um, it's it's a matter of giving them the exposure that they need to make choices because a lot of kids haven't seen the things that we have, just for the fact that we're older, you know, and we've been around and we've been, yeah. you know, in the field. So, you know, how do you how do you uh, make learning self-directed, and at the same time, you know, you do want to spoon feed them, like you know, the standards and the really important artists and you know the stuff that everybody kind of needs to cover. So. You know, those are those are interesting questions. How to balance? Okay, and we're going to end with that question. <laughs> Sorry, um, I, 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 but, but I, I think I, I'm thrilled because these are exactly the kinds of questions that that we've been asking, and um, so I'm, I'm, I'm really happy to have added some art teachers who are asking the same kinds of questions. So. Um, Let's keep sharing. Check Youth Voices out if that makes sense somehow. That's one place we can connect. One of the nice things that I can say that happens there is that students see each other's work and just, and it's not even responding to so like, oh, could we do that too? <laughs> happens, you know, that kind of thing. Um, just, just that kind of informal thing. Um, and um, we'll invite you all to come back in a couple of weeks. How's that sound? And in the meantime, go to Jake's um, art teachers um, group 
and uh, we'll keep talking. Fair enough. Uh, I'll also yeah. uh, I'll also put my email on the chat right now in case anybody wants to uh, email and. Um, um, I don't know. For me, sometimes email is good as a reminder to go into the Google Plus group and check, you know, what's being said. Well, thank you, Colleen, Sounds good. for all of your insights and thank connecting. And thank Jake for this idea. Thank um, you. I want to say that you you'll be able to find a recording of this um, up at edtechtalk.com um, and um, at teachersteachingteachers.org. And we broadcast here every Wednesday night at. Um, edtechtalk.com, uh, which is a channel of the World Bridges Network, um, and Jeff Lebo and Dave Cormier set that up several years ago. By now. Thank you all, um, Thanks, guys. and talk to you again soon. Nice to meet you all. Bye. Bye.